All right, guys, uh, today we're going to uh, look into getting a good nozzle check. This printer here behind me has been sitting in the powered on position. So it's been powered on for about three weeks with no use. So um, I wanted to make sure it's gonna have a really bad nozzle check for you guys. And this will be the steps on how I'm gonna bring this printer back to life and make it a good nozzle check. This is something that you need to be doing every single day before you go to print, not every time before you print, but every day before you go to print and then maybe check your nozzle check at lunchtime. And this is how I go about to get a good nozzle check for us. So since this one's sitting for a long time, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up. Cause I know that the, um, the ink pad and the ink cap is gonna be gross. The bottom of the print head's burn gonna be a little gross. So we'll go ahead and get a rag for the capping station. It doesn't really matter if you have a specialty rag or it's just an old torn up t-shirt. You can see here just how much ink's accumulated here just from sitting for a couple of weeks with no use from it cycling the ink. We're gonna wipe this up down in here. There's ink all over that. Make sure if we're inspecting our gasket here, because this makes a seal to the bottom of the print head and the pump's actually on the other side of this. So it's actually gonna suck on the bottom of your face of your print head. So make sure our seal is nice and clean, nothing build up. I'm gonna wipe the bottom of the print head just because it's been sitting for so long. I suggest using a microfiber cloth for this. Move the table out of the way. Down on the bottom of here, you can see the, the print head. We'll just wipe front to back. Make sure there's no gunk build up on the bottom of my print head. Everything feels good down there. Looks okay down there. So if we had build up there, there could be a dry clump of ink keeping the gasket from making the seal of the bottom of the print head and then it won't be able to load the ink. It'd be like sucking out of a straw with a hole in it to get your ink to come through the head to get a good nozzle check. So we'll send this home. And just for fun, we're going to do a nozzle check right now just so we can see what we're working with. This is the first time I've done a nozzle check on this machine for about three weeks. I like to use a scrap piece of acrylic lying around. If you don't have acrylic, Another thing I like to use is packaging tape. So um, we'll do the first nozzle check on the acrylic and then uh, the second nozzle check, I'll show you how I'm doing it with the tape. Okay, just gonna put this here. Keep in mind that our sensor here is not gonna see acrylic. You can also use glass. It's not gonna see it, it sees right through it. So we'll just bring it up with that in mind to not crush the glass into the X-rail of the machine. Depending on the firmware is gonna be where the machine takes its nozzle check. So some machines go all the way, reset all the way back to zero point and then do a nozzle check. Some machines will just do a nozzle check wherever it is. So that depends on the setting. This one does a nozzle check wherever it is, but just know that it may go back to the home position to also do a nozzle check in the same position every single time. And that depends on your firmware. So we'll go ahead and just press the button on the front here that says nozzle to do this nozzle check. Wow, believe it or not, it's actually not that bad. The CMYK is not bad at all. I'm actually really surprised with that. I wish I had a bad nozzle check. But anyways, our white's not very good right here, so I'll show you how to resolve that. And the reason why I like to use the acrylic is because it doesn't get enough contact time with the lamp to fully dry, so we can just wipe this right off. And then uh, we can do another nozzle check on the acrylic and just keep using this over and over and over again until we can't use it anymore. A piece of glass does the same thing. Has no problem printing on the acrylic because it gets more contact time with the lamp. The nozzle check gets really fast and it's still a little not dry. So um, let's go ahead and do the step to get that white so it's in full. So to do this, we can see we're connected to one head. This represents that we're connected to the machine uh, down in here. So this machine is ready to go. So it really wasn't all that bad, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward like we had a bad nozzle check instead of a good nozzle check, which I was surprised to see. So I, I would go into settings and down here where it says load ink, we would select H1. H1 is always your color head. This is a one head machine, so it prints color and white out of one head. If you have a two head machine, it'll print color and white out of one head and varnish out of your head too. If you have a three head machine, it'll print only color from H1 and then white out of H2 and then varnish out of H3. I hope you got that. We're dealing with a one head machine, so we'll just clean one head. If I had a really bad nozzle check, I would load the ink. After two or three weeks, it would probably load for, oh, 10 seconds. 
once you hear in the pump and the motor is starting to struggle, that means that there's ink down to the ink pad. So we'll go ahead and stop that. While we're at this point here, it'd be good since we're loading ink to verify that your machine is actually loading ink appropriately. So you hear the pump running, but is it actually pumping ink? And one way we could do that is after we stop loading the ink for 10 seconds, we'll move the print head over and then your ink pad should be full of uh, ink, just like this. So this machine is appropriately loading ink, so we know we don't have any problem with the uh, machine's seal. So the most common issue with Epson print heads all around is that rubber seal on top is not aligned properly or has a crack in it or something, but this one is loading just fine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just do the clean from right here, so we can just press this clean. So what that does is it does a normal clean on all the print heads that your machine has. You're gonna to need to do that if you've been sitting uh, overnight, over the weekend, when on vacation came back, you're gonna need to be cleaning all your print heads anyways. And then as you get them one by one, if color comes in good, well, we'll just work on varnish or white until it's good. All right, while I'm waiting on this to clean, I'll show you my uh, tape method. So I just take some packaging tape, And I tape it directly to the bed, like you just saw. You can't really see it, but now we'll just do a nozzle check right on top of uh, that packaging tape. Okay, so th there's the tape. You can see white's still not perfect, but the color is still good. So we need to load more ink, redo those same steps again until we get a good nozzle check. If you see that you have colors mixed in your uh, nozzle, there's a way to clean that out. And the best way to do that is to just simply print your color flag. So after you get what you think is about an 85% good nozzle check, print a color flag. So that's the next step after uh, we have achieved the good white. We're gonna load and a clean and, and then the white will come through and then we'll go ahead and do a color flag. Now I'll put a link to the color flag in my description if you don't have one. It's also on uh, Jay's Printer's Facebook page. Uh, we'll make it available there if you want to go over to the Facebook group and uh, grab a free color flag file there. Okay, so let's go ahead and print our uh, color flag. So here's our color flag. You can see right here, if it's sticking in the back of my face, sorry about my nose. We went from black to blue. That's the point in printing the color flag. Well, one of the points of printing the color flag, another point is verifying your colors are correct but you can see that well i guess it's like a dark purple to a blue so there was a little bit of um black in our nozzle check just a tiny bit and by printing this flag we actually printed it out to normal colors and actually this machine i think is ready to print and we'll do a nozzle check right now and um hopefully it's ready to go and our color flag looks good a sign that you have a bad nozzle check is it's going to have lines in your color flag All right, see the CMYK. You guys can barely see it. If you see in person, it's pretty easy to see. Pulling it up to the light. I'm not happy with this channel at all. It kind of went away. This is something that you struggle with after machines have been sitting a long time. So this is the far left channel on my printer. So this channel here, my far left channel on the white is uh, not giving me any white. I'm gonna load, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have ink here and we didn't get a problem like a clog line or something like that by pulling the damper out and I'm just gonna suck on the damper with, which I got a good supply of white ink, actually. This ink is good, so I'm just gonna take this ink and put it right back into the ink well. And now we're gonna load more ink. So every time you pull up a damper, you have to restart your process to let air into your system. So you pull your damper up and check if you have ink, you've got to start all the way over. So it could turn into an endless cycle that you just pull up your damper and you have a bad nozzle check, and then you load ink and you almost got it, and then you pull the damper up again, and you've restarted the cycle of getting a good nozzle check. So only do that if you have to do it. Um, so I just wanted to verify it was there. This has been sitting a very long time. And it is there, so I know all I need to do, I'm just gonna load a little more ink. Okay, so the white channel, like I said, has been sitting for about three weeks, and it appears that the head is a little clogged because of the three weeks without being used. So a way that we're gonna actually get that out is I'm gonna use some UV cleaner. Uh, if you don't have any UV liquid cleaner, it's fine. You can use denatured alcohol, or a rubbing alcohol will 
eat away the UV ink. Just don't do this too much, uh, but this is the process to do it. That just means don't do this every single day. So, all right, you're gonna need your syringe, just a normal syringe with a little piece of ink tubing. Push in on the end of your syringe. We're gonna go ahead and load this up by opening up the, the ink bottle, right? We're gonna load the syringe with some fluid. Now we're gonna go over to the printer. I'm gonna shut the printer off. I'm just anything or she switch. But you can unplug the machine and flip the power switch on the back. Now this head will be able to move by hand very slowly because these are DC motors. If you push it, it'll actually start generating electricity. I don't know if you know that or not, but <laughs> let's slide that over. We'll get an old rag. We're gonna put it underneath the print head because what's gonna happen is it's gonna spray a little bit of alcohol through. We're only having problems with the white channels. So I'm only gonna work on the white. Don't touch the other ones if you don't have, don't have any problems with them because an excessive amount of alcohol through your print heads is not good for them. So we only really wanna do this when we actually need to do it. So I'm gonna pull up two white dampers. If you just give them a little wiggle and pull them upwards and they come right up. There we go. These may dribble just a little bit of ink, fair warning. I'm just gonna put them over to the side here. They do dribble a little bit, it's gonna go in the rag. This is seven milliliters of the cleaner, UV cleaner. We're gonna put half of this through one channel, the other half through the other channel. And by the channel, I mean, that's what the dampers are hooked to. Each one's hooked through a uh, channel on your print head. So to, to do this, we just take this over top of here and you push down like the damper would be. You see it holds it up there by itself. And I'm gonna put half this through. You can see a nice clean stream come through down here. This should be relatively easy to push through. If it's difficult to push through or you can't push it through, I'm sorry, the print head's clogged. But we're relatively easy to push through. That's one channel and I'm gonna move to the other one. And the same thing. That one was really easy, so. Okay. I'm gonna move back to this one because I think it was clogged worse. Let's put it through. All right, now we're going to reload our dampers into the print head and they just push right in. Close the print head, move our rag and power it right back on. All right, so now our print head is full of the UV cleaner and the white channels. So we also lifted the damper, so we need to restart the cycle of loading. I'm gonna load for 10, 15 seconds. Then we're gonna run another clean. Then we'll check our uh, nozzle check to see how it looks now. now. I don't anticipate it'll be absolutely beautiful because it's gonna need just a little bit more work to uh, get the good nozzle check in. So with the stepped in here, we finally got ourselves a good no nozzle check and we're ready to print. I suggest that you go ahead and do a nozzle check at the beginning of the day, and then after you come back for lunch, uh, do a nozzle check twice a day, and then just get that up to your habit. You know, it's about a five, 10 minute routine that you gotta go through every single day before you start to print. It can be tedious sometimes, but you'll get it. If your print head has sat too long and it's got a clog, uh, check out. You may need to actually uh, replace that print head. I have videos on how to replace the print head. Uh, also, there's um, troubleshooting for these style of printers available on jaysprinters.com. You go down to the bottom right hand corner and see the chat bubble there and one of our technicians or maybe even I will respond to you. We also have our group, um, Jays Printers official group that you guys can go on there and, and uh, request to join that where actual users of these style of printers get together and talk and troubleshoot and or get together and talk for new uh, ideas and things they can do with their creativity. I'm Jay. Thanks for stopping. See you later.